Hey, good people, Batavia here. So we are talking all things containers. We're growing in 60 containers in the front yard garden and in the backyard garden, vegetables, herbs, and a few fruit. And we have part one, which is in the description as well as linked above. And we're gonna go ahead and dig into part two. Okie doke, so just in case you haven't seen part one and you are watching part two now, I do want to do a walk around to show and share how the containers are set up, primarily in the backyard garden, and how I have them situated in between and around the raised beds. And while I do that, let me just give a big thank you to those who like, watch, comment, share, and subscribe to Be Better Garden. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. And if you do, you can hit the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted each time I share more hashtag garden joy. So I am in Chicago, Illinois in the U.S. I garden in zone six. And everything that you'll see here in containers has primarily been either direct sowed or transplanted somewhere around the end of May up until probably early to mid and even late June for some of the things that are a bit younger in the containers. All right, let's go ahead and dig in. This is probably my number one favorite space just because it's just such a good use of this space, right? You know, so where the patio stops and then where the fence begins. Uh, I wish if I did anything over again, I would have put down some landscape fabric because it does require a bit of weeding. So I'd have done that before I put down the rocks here, uh, but that's fine. Uh, so these containers all the way up until the carrots are about four gallons, 4.25 gallons maybe. And then we get on to five gallon containers. I get these from the grocery store, the supermarket um, for free, which is a bonus. I normally will stop in and ask their bakery section if they have any um, empty containers. And I know it's a little bit obnoxious because beggars shouldn't be choosy, but I tend to lean into the larger ones. I may even say five gallon. I have a bunch of the two gallons, which I'm thinking about using for things like lettuce in this early spring and fall. Um, but those are a bit small for kind of larger summer plants. So anywho, we have jalapeno plants, which are doing well, these two. Um, and some of you all, if you saw, I use this blue tape when I'm starting my seeds. And then if the tape is still in good condition, I'll just attach it to the container. You know, if it's still stickable <laughs> um, to keep in mind where and what's planted where. Um, I don't think I did that here, so don't know what this big girl is, but she is doing wonderful. Um, but I'm uber excited about this one. So this is the, you know, try to grow it, right? This is labeled Long Red Aldi. And that's because I saved the seeds for <laughs> from some sweet peppers I purchased from Aldi's over the winter. Um, the grocery store Aldi. And save those seeds started the peppers from seed back at the very end of February I think and the plant looks great I'll be curious to see what type of pepper what it looks like it was kind of a long oh, I guess long red <laughs> there it is so there were uh, the package came was like yellow orange and red I just basically saved the red ones uh, so these are carrots um, this wire is based on some of that digging that I mentioned that was from last month um, and then I didn't come back in and either reso um, which I probably should do here's a marigold a giant marigold we have an eggplant here which has a bunch of flowers a bunch of ants but that's okay for now uh, so this is a black beauty so my goal here was to see how a larger fruit producing plant would do in a five gallon container because I have I think a black beauty in the front yard so if all else fails hopefully that'll produce but this is looking really good potatoes which haven't come up which I'm going to dig in at some point this week my guess is the potato probably rotted or there's a chance that I thought I planted a potato <laughs> see potato here and I didn't uh, but definitely potatoes here potatoes here potatoes here and then these next two are potatoes as well. 
So in previous videos, I have a couple of corrections. So my two notes on these containers, first off, they're 18 gallon, and I've been saying for the last few years they're 20, but they're actually 18. Second, these things are really not meant for the elements in a climate like mine. I'm going to say that as a caveat. I'm in Chicago. Uh, the winters are harsh. I leave these outdoors. Um, so I think maybe I would get more time out of them if I brought them indoors or if my climate was warmer. Uh, another gardener mentioned them as well as something that really breaks down. Again, this is the kind of the disadvantage of when you're using something that really isn't meant for the elements, right? Um, so you can see this has basically lost the entire lip. And for the purpose of what I'm using them for, they still work. Um, but if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't buy them for this purpose and um, once they really break down and crack up I am not going to replace them with the same type of container. I'll probably go for this size probably with something like um, more 20 gallon grow bags. We talked about potatoes here. We have two pepper plants and a few different flowers here. Um, Cosmos which I've fallen in love with. Who knew I could fall in love with another flower but I have. Um, and then we have deadhead this while we're here and then we have um, a chocolate bell pepper which I loved last year and then we have a sugar red rush pepper which was it's definitely a hot pepper uh, but it's very flavorful and probably right around the kind of limit of the heat that I can really enjoy um, here we have this is, I think, a Plabano, Plabano pepper, which I've struggled with over the last couple of years. Um, then I have a Serrano pepper, which is a great sub in for me uh, for jalapenos, for things like salsa and things like that. Um, I don't remember if I've already shared. This is not just prettiness. <laughs> These are actually sweet potato vines. Uh, that I planted for the purpose of seeing if they'll produce sweet potatoes. I may give this one more go because it's kind of like how do you get the most out of this large container. I may give this one more go in a really sunny space. This isn't the sunniest. Um, I had a 20 gallon grow bag with sweet potatoes in here last year and it produced little or nothing. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens here. Let's see, we have just the deck, I think, to cover back here. Then we'll wrap up in the front yard. So this creation, uh, you know, it's one of those love-hate things. So I think it's very clever, right? I'm very pleased with myself. However, um, there are some warnings with it. This wire is ideal for this size. Uh, it has kept, for, as far as I can tell, the cabbage uh, moth out. I just don't think that she's figured out how to get through here. Although I do have some other netting that she's clearly gotten through the new black netting that I mentioned that I'm using this year. Um, but the damage I've seen, there definitely is some bug damage. And then primarily the damage is basically on me moving the cage. So we'll see if we can get this open while being careful. So that's with one hand, very cautiously. <laughs> um, so real quick in here, uh, when I move the cage from that four foot by four foot bed there earlier this year, I said kind of it's bulky, right? Where do I put it? Do I want to break it down? Like, I, I hate to spend time creating this and then not use it. So this worked out really well. This is one of my favorite containers to grow in from a aesthetic standpoint. Um, it actually is pretty large. I think it's 16 or 17 gallons and it is decorative, right? It's, it's okay for things to look nice too, right? Um, so everything in these containers were started from seed besides the red cabbage. They were uber small when I planted them. They went in May the 12th and so they're just at two months growth now. Uh, so that's kohlrabi. Uh, so this is lacinato kale or dinosaur kale or Tuscan kale. I have some purple kale here, which is pretty slow. Um, but again, too much of growing from basically just getting their true leaves to now. 
I think this is being shaded. I think that's some leaf miners. So I'm going to take that off. Um, I think these are being shaded. And so this is the reason why there's not that much growth or discoloration. And so once we get to the point of harvesting this purple kohlrabi, we should see improvements. Uh, same thing here, purple kohlrabi and then the red cabbage, um, which looks pretty bad. I'm of the mind to pull it, give the other plants a chance, maybe even get maybe a bean. Um, you can see that it started to form a head. So the curiosity in me says, let's see what happens when the weather is cooler. Um, this is the only one that I purchased. So there is that small investment. It's like a six pack for like, you know, about $3. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and, and call the time on this one. Um, but anywho, that is what's going on in these containers. Over here, we're getting into herbs now. More basil, uh, which has been, ooh, <laughs> that is a um, Japanese beetle. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry. <laughs> so then there's some carrots I direct sowed. Uh, these, this is what's uh, mustards and, and pak choy that we're saving seeds from. We planted that back in May, but it bolted nearly as soon as it got planted. I'm going to put some more basil in. I started these from seed outdoors. I don't think I tagged it, but maybe like last month in June. We're going to plant some of that here. We have some candy stevia um, that could use some pruning. Um, these herbs, unfortunately, I couldn't figure out where I wanted to plant them. So they just got into these containers maybe two weeks ago. Um, so I'm sure they'll take off, but for now they're pretty small. More basil, basil, flour, parsley, more parsley, weed, parsley, parsley, thyme. These things were started from seed, oregano, uh, some flowers mixed in, more basil, more candy stevia. This plant looks really good. Some sage here. All right, so we're going to get to the front yard garden and wrap up. I really like the design of these containers, but they, it seems like they struggle as the summer gets on with retaining moisture. And these are super old and probably doesn't, don't have a lot more seasons in them but they also have struggled. Look great in the spring. Um, I'm saving as many of the seeds as I can for the spinach. Um, but my gut tells me that, well, this looks like it's bolting. Um, some of these plants will pick up their pep in their step once the weather cools off. But I don't know, if, like these pepper plants, how much they'll ever do, um, given where we are in the season and their size. We have sweet corn growing here and a 20 gallon grow bag, which is doing really, really well. I'm gonna say that probably the early part of June is when I direct sowed that. We have sweet potatoes, which we're trying again in the front yard garden. This is like the third year, I think I've tried sweet potatoes and various things. I've tried them in these grow bags, which I've not been like over impressed with what they've produced, but I'm thinking maybe I have this in a better spot this year, we'll see. And then there was a bean plant that I had volunteer. I think that's the yard long bean um, that I basically moved, transplanted, if you will, into this grow bag. So another ground cherry. So remember at the top part of the video, we showed the busboy container. That plant looks so much better than this one. I don't know what to make of it, but I feel like this is just real estate that I could be using up. <laughs> so we'll see, you know. I, my gut tells me go ahead and pull this one leave the other because I have one in ground as well as in the backyard in that container I showed and just use this space for something um, larger in the fall alrighty thanks so much for spending some time with me if you have any questions or comments feel free to drop them below and I'll see you all in the next one